Welcome to the overview of the LM10 Microfluidizer. This will be a quick tutorial on how to operate with the touchscreen PLC. The first step is we will turn on the LM10 with the disconnect button on the side. We can see the PLC starting up and the home screen. This first screen alerts the user to read and understand the manual before they run the processor. We will touch the continue button. This is the F1 screen. At any point, we can return to this screen using the F1 key on the bottom. This screen on the top has the on and off controls. A set pressure, depending on the units, this will alert the high and the low range for the PSI, the bar, or the megapascals that is available. The button to set your process pressure, there is a prime on the lower left. We can continue on to the F2 screen. And this screen mostly shows your temperatures. Again, we have the on-off control on the top. The first thermocouple input is on the left. If the second thermocouple input is selected, it'll show up in the center of the screen. And then on the far right, we can set our process pressure. There's a section for the actual process pressure, the feedback. And then there's a graph button on the bottom right. If we select the graph button, a process pressure graph appears. And when we run the processor, we will be able to see a visual representation of the pressure in a graph format. Under the F3 screen, this screen again has the on-off controls on the top, and a general overview of what is happening in the PLC. A couple of the input and outputs are shown, as well as a batch cycle counter. There's also lifetime cycles for every stroke, and the batch cycle is resettable. So we can hit the blue reset button, and that will return to zero. The F4 screen. On this screen, you are able to select the language that you would like. There are a couple on the first screen. We can hit more, and additional languages are available. We can change the units that are displayed on the screen. For pressure, we have PSI, bar, and MPA. And to give an example, we can hit bar. We'll return to the F1 screen, and you can see bar is selected. We can also do MPA. And again, you can see MPA. And the same thing for temperatures. We can do Fahrenheit, Celsius. And you can see we are now in Celsius units. And there's Kelvin as well. So we can see the Kelvin here. We'll return back to the F1 screen, and we will run the processor. The first step to run it is to prime the machine. In this instance, we'll hold the prime button to get a prime. You can hear the machine cycling, and there is a prime. So we'll let go of the button. The next step is to set the desired process pressure. To do that, we'll push the middle button and here we can type in whichever pressure we would like to run at. For this example, we will run at 10,000 PSI. And we'll hit the return button on the bottom right. To start it, we hit the start button. And the machine operates. We can walk through our screens again now that the LM10 is running. Again here, we can see our process pressure that we set at 10,000 PSI, as well as the actual pressure. Again, we can press this button here and change our pressure. So let's go to 12,000, and we'll hit the return button. And you can see the actual, and we'll touch the graph. And you can see the process pressure graph. The F3 screen just shows our counters and a couple I.O. Um, 
And then we'll also note that the F4 screen is now disabled. So at any point, we can stop the processor. The next function of the LM10 is to alert the user that it's time for maintenance. We will start the processor. And what will happen is, at a set number of cycles of the plunger, a little yellow light will illuminate. And this will tell the user that it is time for service. You can see the little yellow light, and if we touch it, just a service reminder. The next section of the LM10 is the low air pressure warning. So we will turn the machine on and slowly throttle the air to simulate a low air feed to the unit. Here you can see the yellow light to alert the user that the process pressure is not being met. We will now turn the air back on. The unit achieves the process pressure and the warning is gone. Perfect. You stop. Yeah, you stop. The next section we will show the e-stop operation. So we'll turn the machine on and we will hit the e-stop. You can hear the audible alarm. We will reset. You can notice the process pressure input resets to zero. And we can start the machine.